Hey everybody, I'm Dean with Seed St. Louis. Welcome to our demonstration beds here at Bell Community, Community Garden. Um, so as you've probably known, if you've seen our past couple of videos, uh, we don't have our traditional demonstration beds in just like showing how to grow lots of different things, but we did want to rent some beds to continue to do variety trials um, to try and find um, either better varieties or new varieties uh, that we can recommend or potentially grow and sell, make available to people in the community that we know do well. So what we're talking about today is kind of our last batch of variety trial for this for the year, which are overwintering trials. So. Um, traditionally in St. Louis, kind of the only things that you would overwinter without like serious protection would be things like um, garlic or shallots, um, elephant garlic, you know, like basically those kind of allium family, um, really cold hardy things. But as our winters are creeping ever warmer, um, we have been experimenting and having pretty good luck with some brassicas. And so that is why for the last couple of years we've recommended and had information about winter uh, cauliflower and sprouting broccoli, which are both brassicas that overwinter. But we wanted to look at a couple other things just to see their cold hardiness. So these are all things that were planted. The idea being we planted them in September and they're going to grow. And then the hope is that we will harvest them in spring, but that they would be ripe much earlier than a spring planted equivalent. Um, so this first kind of batch here are cabbage. So uh, you can see because they've already got some size on them, they would mature ahead much earlier in the season than sticking in, you know, a little tiny cabbage at the end of March if they overwinter. So that's the hope. So these are winter cabbage. There's lots of different varieties in here because we're trying to see which, if any of them, will overwinter. Traditionally, these winter cabbages have really only worked um, reliably in places like the, the UK, kind of the coastal maritime areas of Western Europe, and then the Pacific Northwest of the United States and kind of Southern Canada. Um, but like I said, our winters are getting warm enough that uh, we're hopeful that they could overwinter. Uh, we will probably keep an eye on some of these because we have seen that usually they survive our winters, but sometimes when we get those polar blasts, when the jet stream weakens and the polar vortex comes down to us, those real extreme cold blasts that we get might be too much, but because it's generally warmer the rest of the winter, the soil is warmer. So a lot of times just covering them will pull them through those um, extra cold blasts that we get. So we might do that, but otherwise we're not doing any significant um, you know, winterizing, low tunnels, anything like that. So like I said, these are mostly um, uh, winter cabbage here, but then we do also have um, uh, a couple of winter um, cauliflower. So we've grown those in the past and recommended them in the past, but there's some newer varieties that we wanted to try um, or new to us varieties. They're not, they have not been, they're not new from a breeding perspective. Um, but we were able to get a hold of some seeds from some other winter cauliflowers to see how they compare to the past ones that we've had. We have a blog post up about that. I think it's called The Wonderful World of Winter Brassicas, if I remember correctly. Um, most of these are similar to just a standard cauliflower, but I think there's at least one in here that's like a purple-headed cauliflower. Um, and just to give you an example of kind of the time difference here, so a spring-planted cauliflower um, oftentimes will not produce a head until June. Whereas when we've done winter cauliflower, we're getting cauliflower from that, the second half of April.